Hi everyone, it's James here from Antelope Audio. The Grove Hill Liverpool is available for both Synergy Core and non Synergy Core ranges of Antelope Audio interfaces. Liverpool is a modern day fusion of the finest 1930s American technology with a British 1960s twist. Some forward thinking audio engineer brought an American MuTube compressor to England where it was improved upon with several modifications. And believe it or not, these modified units are still in use in studios up and down the country to this very day. The updated hardware units incorporate large custom wound transformers, new old stock tubes or valves and high quality components throughout the audio path. This attention to detail has made its way from the hardware world into the hardware emulation plug-in world. The Liverpool is a feedback style compressor that sounds rich, wide and thick. Try it on acoustic guitars and you'll hear them as clean and clear as ever, yet with a more full-bodied tone. If you have problems getting the mid-range of your tracks and mixes just right, then Liverpool could be the answer you've been waiting for, as it can add a very desirable smoothness to lead guitar, synths and vocals. Put it on a bass channel and you will achieve a big, warm sound. Push it harder and you'll add an edge without affecting clarity. Simply put, the Liverpool is a compressor like no other. So let's dive in and take a look, and most importantly, a listen. Let's take a look around the Grove Hill Liverpool user interface. Unlike many other compressors, the input gain plays two roles. It is used both for adjusting the input level and to specify the desired average compression, as indicated by the gain reduction meter. The input control on the Liverpool is located circuit-wise before the tubes and directly after the input transformer. As you advance the input control, you are hitting the input tube at the gain reduction stage with more signal. The signal is then amplified by the second stage. This is where the compressor's unique tone comes from. The threshold again has two very important roles. Its primary purpose is determining the output level at which the compression commences. Secondly, it adjusts the compressor's ratio. The attack knob controls how much of the signal's transient is allowed through before compression starts. There are six different speeds, labelled 1, fastest, to 6, slowest, with every second selection labelled C for turning off the compressor. In this position, the effect can be used as a line level amplifier with amazing tone. We then have the large gain reduction meter. The recovery control determines how quickly the signal rebounds after the input signal has fallen below the threshold. There are six recovery positions labelled 1, fast, to 6, slow, with every second selection labelled H turning on the hold function. The hold function is a unique feature of the Liverpool. It was added as a modification of the original compressor based on feedback from the recording engineers of the day. When trying to process the initial attack of an audio track, the slow attack of the compressor will cause a very audible thump to be produced. In such cases, the hold function is used to prime the compressor with the required amount of gain reduction first, thus preventing a thump from occurring. This is done by playing the track into the compressor, setting the controls as required, then moving the recovery control to the hold positions. This prevents the compressor's release from taking place, maintaining the amount of gain reduction and in turn the tone. Your track can then be stopped and played back from the beginning. Once the initial attack of the first note has been processed, the compressor can be switched out of hold and put back to the desired recovery settings. If the unit is compressing a track with room ambience, the ambient sound from the recording would swell up in volume at the end of the performance as the gain reduction returned from the compressed level back to zero. This can be avoided by switching the recovery control to the adjacent hold position after the last note is finished, which would stop the compressor release from taking place. The output attenuator of the Liverpool is controlled from a six position rotary switch. This method of attenuation allows for constant impedance on the output transformer as well as the load. The available choices are 0 dB, minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, minus 20 and minus 30 dB. In the hardware original, the power switch is used to turn the compressor on or off. Here it is used to bypass the effect. Here I've got an instrumental track I've been working on. Other than a bit of reverb to give the track some space, 
there are hardly any effects on this session. This is how the parts were recorded. I've put an instance of Liverpool on the drum bus, the bass, the keys, lead guitar and on the master bus. So let's take a listen to what they are doing and adding to this track. I'm not a fan of heavy compression and that over the top pumping sound. But even when you hit Liverpool hard, there are next to no compression artefacts. It's a very forgiving compressor. As said before, Liverpool is great for adding a nice warm tone to bass. It's also going to bring up the tail of each of these bouncy notes in this part, making it feel more even. Let's hear it. This electric piano part is very dynamic. I'm going to use the Liverpool to smooth out the lumps and bumps and give me a more even feel to the track. Let's use the Liverpool to warm up this quite thin sounding lead guitar. As I've said before, I'm not a fan of smashing the compressor, especially on the master channel. I want to get the tone of the compressor and just a hint of compression to take the edge off that snare and stop it poking out but without slamming.
So that's the Liverpool Vintage Compressor for Antelope Audio FPGA powered interfaces, based on the amazing sounding Grove Hill Audio hardware. I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name's James Ivey and I'll see you again very soon.